Hobo, get done run off the place down there. That's far away. MD. Oh, right, Maryland, right? I'm, I'm not as familiar with the East Coast as I would like to be. Traveling's hard. Expensive and all that. We'll live all vicarious like through our skeleton boy. As you walk down the road, a black crow flutters down to land in your path. It looks at you, cocks its head, and speaks. Well, you've got a long, long road ahead, don't you? All these people to chase down, so I hear. It laughs. I've got some experience when it comes to chasing, folks. Tell me about it. Well, if you want, you could go find your friend again. Ask him more about their life. They might want better stories this time, though. It peers up at you. Didn't they tell you where they're heading next? Yeah. By the way, the world's full of people. If you could find another friend like that, you went, uh, if you went to looking around, there's more than one interesting person in this land for sure. It gives a gra it gives a gravelly laugh. That's what humans say anyway. And with that, it launches into the air and disappears. Just doing bird things. Another re-explaining how to whistle. But yeah, I was just I was just dead wrong for a while there. I figured you'd do like D-pads and stuff like that. Stop for me. You. I can do both at once, though. Yeah. This is the rhythm of moving. Keep me busy, at least. <laughs> Muddling through the dark, you stumble into the path of the white deer. Its beauty strikes you at once. It is something otherworldly, beyond borders. A moon swimming in the void. Human shouts not far away break the spell. The deer's ears prick up. This thing is being hunted. Help the deer. You know a way out of here. As the hunter's cries get louder, you approach the deer carefully, palms outstretched. As you grow close, your features become clearer in the light of the deer's aura. It bolts into the path of an oncoming train. Ooh. I've done become a tragic figure of my own, huh? So do I keep the stories, by the way, that I spent? Seems like I am. Little eyelids here and there. Hmm. Is it because the stories themselves wake up over time? Yeah, I've got Quinn's adventures. That's the wild card, I suppose. So some some irony there, I suppose. I'm supposed to be this this. I'm trying to help them, but because I'm a this nightmare skeletal figure, it bolted. Or at least it seems to be the case. Or maybe just saw me in general, but I tried to help and I and I became a problem instead. After gossiping for a while about the weather and the crops and the state of the world, all bad and getting worse, he takes a different track. You look like someone who likes a good story, he wheezes. Try this one on for size. I'm listening. After loudly and repeatedly clearing his throat, he tells you the story of the women communing with the wood spirits. It sounds a lot like the story of the woman praying in the woods, but with some parts changed and some other parts added. Listen to the tale. When he grins up at you at the conclusion of the tale, you give him the effusive praise he's apparently expecting. You'll have to remember that version, even if it's not quite what happened. It's a good story. The story has grown! Interesting. Do you actually get to hear the, the grown stories, though? Hey, there you have it. So all these ones have the... those kinds of eyes, but this one has an open eye now. To show that it's leveled up, essentially. 
so my, my stories grow stronger. I think that's what he means when he said he wants better stories in the future, is what the crow said. So I want to grow my story so I can do, do well enough for that. New York! The air stinks of gasoline and trash, and you're boxed in by brick. But damn, there's something invigorating about that stink. God, you feel like there's an engine in your chest. The engines belch black smoke as the ferry churns gray water into froth. A broad-shouldered figure leans out over the rail, eyeing the skyscrapers on the horizon. Nearby, a man and a woman speak in low, urgent voices. He takes her wrist gently. She is weeping softly. Let's listen in. I wish you didn't have to go, she says. It's got to be work on some of those buildings going up. His thumb skates over her pulse point. I checked every day for a week. There ain't. I'll be back, though. Got your picture in my wallet, don't I? It's not forever. Her words are split by a sob. Might as well be. My parents didn't come to New York for this. She leans against him, the wind tossing her hair. He pulls her to his chest. I'm leaving because I gotta go. If there was another way... They stand together, close, quiet, in the stiff breeze. A couple parted by unemployment, so now we've got a sad love story of a, gr of a couple set apart from each other. We can get a slice of pizza if we want it. Let's see here, though. Okay, so my next destination is potentially... We want to skip to the kid. He's in Maryland, so is another character. We've got two people we can meet down there. I don't really feel like I need a train trip to get my ass down there, though. Seems pretty obtainable. A jet black crow alights on the low branch of a twisted tree. Look at you, at cause. Think you got some good stories already? Well, I heard better. Much better. <laughs> it seems to wink at you. Want to hear my tricks? Ask about stories. The ones you got now? Pathetic stuff. You tell those stories around, they'll come back more exciting, more satisfying. So always listen to the stories other folks tell. Their tales are less true, sure, but more useful around the campfire. Makes sense. The boss has a point about the true ones, though. The crow admits, they're extra interesting. You learn a couple folks' true life stories, and everyone will like them. No matter what kind of story, they think they want to hear. Any other tips? Well, everyone's the captain of their destiny. It, get, it gives a burst of laughter. Ain't no bootstraps in the world that can save you now, but the choices you make. They change the kind of story you can tell. It ruffles its feathers, a sort of shrug. Choose wisely or don't. Ha! <laughs> yeah, they're saying, because I keep getting branching dialogue choices during stories while they're playing out. And so in those moments, if I were to make a different choice, then I could get a different story. For example, I had the choice to interrupt those people in the woods, but I let them communicate with each other and, and do their chant. And as a result, I got a different outcome. The one where I respect their privacy and I hear their prayer, where otherwise I might have been interrupted and something else could have happened. Meanwhile, something else could have happened to that deer. Maybe it would have... Maybe it would have gotten away if it hadn't seen me. Or maybe it would have run directly into the hunters. Outside the small thicket of apple trees, the phrase tended to by John Chapman is carved into a fence post. Nearby, a hound lies on its side, perfectly still. Flies buzz around its ears. But a grizzled man pauses at his digging to shoo them off. 
I'll help him dig. There's an extra shovel. With it, the two of you make short work of the grave. He tells you about his beliefs, why he's raising apple orchards in the middle of the country. It's a sin to graft, he tells you. Hurts the tree. Eventually, the hole is deep enough. Witness him. He stoops to the ground and lowers the pup into the earth. Tears flow freely. I'll see him again in heaven, he tells you. Our souls are bound by love. He wipes his eyes. I don't think I can bear to stay here, though. Maybe I'll set out again. This poor dog died, John Chapman. Interesting, strange little detail. He was barefoot. Rather curious about that. Ooh. A little icon came up there. A little too fast to actually make out what, what I'm looking at, though. Got two good hands? An old man calls. A down tree has flattened his front yard. And his porch, too. His two sweaty sons are chopping it into movable pieces. You throw the logs into the old man's cart. At least I can sell it for firewood, he sighs, tossing you some coins. Ah! A little money doesn't hurt. Oh, I seem to have wandered off. Whoops. Not quite what I was going for. I gotta go and orient myself again. Definitely find yourself wishing there'd be a compass more consistently. But the great American landscape all kind of starts to blend together, doesn't it? Got Philadelphia down here. Yeah, I'm definitely chugging here and there. Probably should be running better for what it is. You're, you're lucky if you find optimized indie games, though. These fellows are lounging in the back of a half-finished office building, taking their lunch break. Hey! One calls, waving you down. Rick was telling us the story. Listen, okay? You tell us if it's bullshit or not. Rick, a credulous-seeming fellow, Seen, uh, starts telling you a story about the Blessed Lighthouse Sanctuary, where souls in love could find respite. You realize it's the story of the two lighthouse keepers, but changed in a few major ways, so it's definitely part bullshit, right? But it's also a little real. A Blessed Lighthouse Sanctuary where souls in love could find respite. It's not bullshit. Half the group groans. How the hell is that supposed to be a real story? Exclaims the man who waved you down. You're all the most gullible pieces of shit I've ever met. The other half of the group, vindicated, shares a bottle of pop with you. Hey! And the story grows in the telling once again. There's a few people around here. Am I close to where I was trying to get to, though? Yep. He's, like, near here, isn't he? Oh, right, that's the camping icon. Every time you get the camping icon, that's your chance to encounter those stories. I keep thinking I'll see the ki the, the person sitting there. Clouds roll together to fill the sky. Whoa. Watch the sky churn or find cover. There's lightning bolts coming down. Let's watch, though. The lightning is so strong that it seems to open a path in the haze above you. You are sure you see massive talons curved around the clouds. The thunder is so immense that the ground trembles. Your lips and hands tingle from the electric charge that fills the air until the dancing lightning passes on over the hills. The massive thunderstorm. There's a couple over here I walked by, so I'll try to pick them up before I talk to the kid again. I should try to arm myself as best I can. 
You notice a black crow sitting on a fence post, watching you with unsettling intensity. Hey! It blurts. Hey, friend, hey! You hear about trains? It gives a throaty cackle. Locomotion, that's the life. I got some good travel tips here. I already know the answer, I think, but let's sure. You ever ride a train? It asks. With your budget, you'll need to hop on at a train yard, though. Fast and convenient, but the railroad bulls don't really like it when you ride in the empty box cars. If you got if you get caught, you'll get beaten. It hops and pecks at something on the ground. Hmm. On the positive side, maybe you'll meet someone to trade stories with. But if you don't like the sound of that, you could hitchhike. Find a friendly car. It laughs. I feel sorry for you landlubbers. No wings, just motors. You can't even cross rivers when you want to, only at safe crossings. You got a point there. I always do. You notice that its beak doesn't move when it speaks, but before you can tell anything else about it, it off it flies. Just a strange raven going around bothering me. Yeah, well you beep on this coast, you weird loser. It's a weird thing about crows. West Coast, they do that blood-curdling, horrifying caw. East Coast, they make like a beeping noise. It's weird. I don't understand how that happens. It's so odd. Our crows make different sounds on each of the two sides of the country, and it seems learned. The stream is a clear, reflective shade of blue. Unusual in this region, where bog iron colors the river's brown. Across the way, a goat with great leather wings laps up the water, its sunken red eyes fixed on your every movement. Um, that's a hell of a drawing. God damn. Looks like a dragon. Is this... I mean, it's real, right? Because it's our story. We're, we're doing it right now. This is a thing in this world. Take stock. You now notice the unnatural absence of wildlife. No fish swim in the stream. No birds sing in the trees. The winged goat drinks with a forked tongue, only abstractly concerned with your presence. Satan, approach. Over the hill, a scorched one-room house lies abandoned two of its four walls in ruins. The goat rears up, front hooves curled, and stretches its wings out to their full breadth. Get closer, let's find out what dying's like in this game. The goat opens its mouth and wails. A protracted, shrill sound, indistinguishable from the cry of a human infant. It only begins to stop when you take several steps back. The winged goat doesn't follow. Instead, it lies down inside the burnt house, surrounded by portraits of a large family, glass frames stained brown from smoke. There are so many questions. How is that gonna get better with additional retellings? I feel like it started in its most fantastical state already. So it's a story that's I encountered like a dragon basically, but it makes it was apparently a goat with wings, and it made the cry of a baby, apparently. And it rested in the demolished house that it might have demolished itself or might have been born from. Was it was it the baby from that house? Stranger, it's good to see you again. You know, I'm gonna see this whole world one day. But for now, I just got my sights set on seeing all 48 of the great US. I already seen 10 whole states. That's better than my folks ever done, that's for sure. Plenty of townies and even some tramps treat me like I'm kid simple. But I ain't helpless, and I only act it when I ain't got no better choice. Like if I get pinched. I do right fine on my own. Don't need nobody but Cass and Flip. I want to hear one of them venturing tales. Got any? An adventuring tale. So he says he's already traveled further than any of his family. And he just plays dumb and helpless if it helps him out when he gets stuck. Adventuring tale. That's an adventuring tale, technically, but it's kind of a 
Thunderstorm? Hmm. Hmm. What is an adventuring tale already? Oh, every tour the stories I've oh the stories I've told are all used up. That's just dangerous. Oh the deer. I have a lot of sad stories. I'm not sure what constitutes adventure exactly. Maybe the deer, despite the whole despite the sad part. Also, this kid shared my stories all over the place, didn't he? You tell the story of the white deer. Ain't life got enough tear jerkers in it without telling stories like that? Jeez. Freedom? Well, that's what them trains have come to mean to me. Freedom. Crossing a country wider than imagination. Hey, do you got any really thrilling stories to tell? I'm hankering for one of those. Thrilling. Okay. I mean, the dragon's pretty thil thrilling, right? I have a lot of sad. A story's thrilling, too. I don't know about this being thrilling. Look at that. Look at how aghast, aghast the faces that seem horrified. It seems to be a horror story as opposed to a thrilling one. Maybe the thunderstorm. A massive thunderstorm. Whoa, quite a story, stranger. In this country, I don't really know what this thing called America is. I know what I done been told in school, but the words don't fit the picture. What with tramping across the whole thing, figure I'll find out for myself soon enough. Hey, tell me a funny story. You seem like you still got a sense of humor. Ooh, do I have any funny stories? Gotta think, do I know any funny stories? I think this might be the voice actress that plays Clementine in Walking Dead. Got a similar kind of tone. He has the funny story of the guy burying his dog. Oh, The couple that doesn't get to see each other anymore. The brothers re- Oh, I didn't mean to click on that! get too much out of tales that are so cheerful. Not enough excitement for me. Huh, the future. I suppose I'll just keep heading west. California sounds mighty fine, and most everyone is heading that way anyhow. Hey, tell me one of those exciting stories. Exciting. I think it's gonna have to be- we're gonna have to try this one, I guess, because I've already tried giving him an adventure- Yeah. I'm gonna spook you. I saw a demon. Were you trying to scare me? Well, you didn't go far enough. Huh. Hmm. Sadness. I ain't seen no sight sadder than in the city. In the city, they want you to feel like a giant among giants, like you can do anything. But I seen them shanty camps full up with folks who got nothing to eat or do. Cities serve to make the small feel smaller. Hey, do you got any really thrilling stories to tell? I'm hankering for one of those. Oh no, he really fixates on specific genres. I need to, I need to avoid this kid, it seems, because I'm spending all my stories, which means I don't get to use any of them again. I don't have thrilling stories. And he already knows all my stories, too. Crap. I'll tell him about the dog, I suppose. I sure was a downer. Give me a good venture tale instead any day. You want to talk about heaven? Ain't no good I can recall coming my life from praying. Small things, big things, no answer all the same. Well, sun's coming up, so I've got to get ready to go. Thanks for the tales, friend. Where are you heading next? Decided yet? Maybe our paths will cross. I'm going up the road this way myself. I'll see something fun. I generally do, you know. There's interesting things to see everywhere if you keep your eyes open. He's going off to the corner of New York. Well, that was a failure. I gotta step my game up. Ooh. They've evolved one of my stories. 
The other guy camping around the corner should be a new character, so my story should work on them at least. This farmer's loitering beside a couple of crates for berries, idly watching the clouds go by. Wait for a pick-me-up, he says, trying to make small talk. Uh, he says, trying to make small talk. Hey, you want to hear a wild story? Absolutely. Starts telling you about the Devil of Leeds. It takes a couple minutes, but suddenly you recognize it as the story about the winged goat by Pristine Water. Whoever told it to the farmer, farmer changed, well, a lot, but still pretty good. I don't know how much you need to hype up when it was already a devil, basically. Where'd you hear that story? Oh, I can't remember, he says. I think I've known it for years, since I was a boy, for sure. Hmm, that can't be right. I, I told it to someone for the first time, like, a minute ago. That story happened to me. Bullshit. His laughter rings down the dusty road. You're a good joker, I'll give you that. Hmm. The devil story's already stronger. So there's still a benefit for throwing stories at that kid, even if they're not good ones that are actually useful. Like, I don't, I don't progress his, his quest line, but I'm becoming powerful. And so once I have more characters to bounce between, I should be able to make more progress here, where he's the, he's the only character I've encountered so far, so I, he, he, I'm, he's burning through my stock and I'm getting backed into a corner. What's that say? Oh, the river. The text in the river flows down the river. That's kind of neat. When does it reset, though? Oh, I don't see any more text. Maybe if I turn it away and then turn back? Yep. It's the Ohio River. It comes flowing by whenever you switch the camera by. That's funny. Washington over there just, just frick, flipping it. Oh, that's the town right there. That's why it's bouncing so much. All right. Mason. My twin brother Paul and I always got into trouble, but we were good. We didn't do nothing to anybody until we left. Then we hurt a lot of people. Me, more so than Paul, because he, well, he didn't make it through. The march I was on, the bonus army. It's less a bonus and more an acknowledgement of what I've had to suffer. Civilians will never understand. So anyway, tell me a funny story? You seem like you know a few good ones. No, I don't. Ah. Are you funny? No, that's just happy. That's like the specific category I still don't know, right? There's funny stories. Those are sad stories. Oh, I'm so garbage. I could tell him Quinn's adventures, though. That's a cheat. Yeah, none of these are happy stories. I mean, funny stories. I barely have any happy stories, let alone any funny stories. It's like a triumphant story. Yeah. The odd silent taxi cab. Not that funny. Save me, Quinn. Wish I could tell that one to my sister. Travel. Well, this walk feels like a little bit of freedom now and again. The flowers along the road make for fine company. But anyway, do you know any good sad stories? True ones? Sad stories. Plenty. Let's talk about the dog. The dead one. I wish I could talk about what happened in the trenches the way you do. I'd help someone to understand. My wishes come true? Well, if I could wish for anything, it'd probably be for a nice, plentiful garden away from everyone else. My own land, my own laws. Do you know any happy stories, hopeful ones? That I do. Happy I can do. The brothers reunited after 30 years. For a moment there, just a moment, I felt better about it all too. My family, they were good to me. Ma and Pa, and to Paul, and to my sister Jessie. 
Some days I wish I could find Jessie again and have her help me. But she always liked Paul best. Tell me a happy story. Something to make the world seem kind. I got that too, the lighthouse. A blessed lighthouse sanctuary where love can find respite. I liked that one. There's some hope left for you too, you know. Don't give it away too quickly. The past doesn't even feel like it happened. It feels like it's happening in every moment, in every slumber. When your memories come back to you, do they clutch at you, at your heart? You know any good jokes? I'm not so good at telling them anymore. Oh, I don't. <laughs> Still don't know any jokes. Uh. That's kind of a joke. Uh, the deer jumping in front of the tree of the train in a dark, dark sort of way. <laughs> I don't mean to be rude, but civvies don't understand what real tragedy is. Wow, way to shit on that dead deer. Freedom is getting paid what you deserve and getting enough to get by. Freedom is the ability to be free of pain. Here's the sun. I've got to go. I'm headed up the road this way. Will our paths cross? The days come and go when the terrors return. They'll never be able to pay back what they owe me, but I'll always keep at them. What about you? Is there something somebody owes you? I did it! Hey, Success once again. He's going right back where we came from, though. All the way back to... Let's go ahead and turn the, mu the music down a little bit. Seems a little overpowering in some of these oop, cases. Characters talking all quiet. But then you have this like... Aggressive... Uh, aggressive horn playing and stuff like that. That's so San Francisco, California. It's gonna be a while before we get there. Dim Bulb Games. You're saying the, the developers of this game are from San Francisco? So he went all the way back to Rhode Island. Yeah, it's a bit out of my way. I think I'll keep trucking forward. Catch a train back to Rhode Island sometime in the future, perhaps. Let's go meet new characters. And also get new stories, of course. That's one of our goals. I'm gonna stick to the coastline. Maybe as long as I can. Can I go in this water? Yes? No? No, I think that might have been the border of the water. Yeah. Washington. I haven't been here yet, right? New town, new story. Every time. It's hard to look at these shining buildings in direct sunlight. You feel like an ant crawling among the Tomb of Giants. Away from the monuments, though, you find a city. That's a little more human. The mailman's uniform is dated and worn. He sits on the edge of the road, head in hands. He looks up as you approach. Can you help? Car clipped me. I think my legs... Well, I'd appreciate it if you could deliver this for me. He holds out a brown envelope. Delivered the letter. The letter's addressed to a James Gibson Sr. 120 J Street. But the city stymies you. The blocks run straight from I to K. You stop a man for directions, but he shakes his head and laughs. <laughs> Someone's playing a joke on you. There's no J Street. Keep looking. Over here! A woman in a brown coat overheard your question. She steers you down an alley. Someone's chalked a big orange J on one wall. I thought Clovis was late. Go left up ahead. Old man Gibson's the third on the right. Go on alone. As you round the corner, the world changes. J Street is a place out of time. Like the city forgot an entire street a century ago and carried on around it, oblivious. Even the noise and bustle of DC can't penetrate this little pocket. Knock on Gibson's door. The man who answers is ancient and stooped. 
He peers at the letter. I think it's from my son. I don't see so well anymore. Will you read it to me? You tear the letter open. It isn't good news. Tell him the truth. He fights it, but his face crumbles. Tears roll down his cheeks. It's better to know. I've been waiting a long time for this. His shaking hand takes the letter. Thank you for telling me. It's a rough time, but it's a lot rougher to try to pretend to something else. Truth might catch up with him sooner or later regardless if I, tr if I try to hide otherwise. I think camping... Yeah, I think I'm going to have to manage my resources more in the future, but I think right now I keep finding new characters to camp with, and I think every time you camp, you get free refill on health and sleep. Without having to deal with like resources and other ways of managing it. That seems, that seems to be kind of with the way it's going right now. I like that little story though. A little hint of platform nine and three quarters going on there, wasn't it? Turn the corner and there's an entire secret street that nobody else knows about. What is this? Oh, it's a crossing. Kind of unnecessary when I got one right there, but okay. Oh, hey. Also a little Doctor Who. That Macy Williams area. He leans against a fence and turns to face you as you pass him by. At his back is a bag full of bird seed. He assures you that the gawky birds perching on his body are the last remaining passenger pigeons. I thought they were extinct. They look extinct to you? You're not sure those dull gray pigeons look anything like the pictures you've seen of passenger pigeons, Oh, you can't help thinking they stare at you a little too intently. Say, you like birds? Sure. They're lovely creatures. Guileless, really. Hunted damn near to extinction, weren't you? He strokes one of his birds under the chin. You think you see drips of blood flecking the creature's dirty gray head. Uh, excuse me. You sense it's about time you start moving on. You be kind to the little birds now, you hear? You hurry along the road, though the flapping of ungainly wings seems to follow you for hours. Um... That turns darker. Are, there, are they attacking birds? Is that why they have flecks of blood? Well... We found Birdcatcher. 